Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome once again to Friday evening, 8 p.m., same place, same time, the happy hours of coaching session. And today I'm very excited to have um, a person who I know for pretty long now, uh, Ramnathan from Chennai. And in fact, we met a couple of months in a totally different location in Kathmandu for a regional scrum gathering. Um, yeah, that was another experience which we had. But yeah, I mean, a very inspirational thought leader, a person who actually has been a part of the uh, World Agility Forum Jury Council and also an avid reader. And yeah, he's currently playing the role of an enterprise agile coach. And today he is going to actually walk us through some, um, I mean, uh, product prioritization techniques, right? Um, and I think we all know about uh, some very, fa very famous and uh, known product prioritization techniques, but I'm sure there are some more in this kitty, uh, what um, he is going to talk about and walk us through. Uh, so without any further delay, let me hand it over to Ram, Ram Nathan. Yeah, all yours, the stage is yours, Ram. And once again, yeah. thanks for accepting the proposal to uh, talk to our community. It's my pleasure. Yeah, Ashutosh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, quickly getting into the topic uh, before, like I'm going to talk about product backlog prioritization techniques, which we will be talking about 20 product backlog prioritization techniques today. Uh, at, at, at least we would tend to cover everything with deep examples in terms of uh, correlating with what we are getting up, uh, the data that we are filling up uh, to, the, to the products, and then we will try to connect each other. So quickly introducing myself, my name is Ramanathan. I work for Standard Chartered GBS as an enterprise agile coach. And uh, these are my credentials and all uh, the way you can connect with me on. And quickly moving on into the topic for the day. So before getting into the topic, I just want to confront uh, that all the uh, topic, what I'm going to talk here is going to be the personal views uh, that I've gone, gone through somewhere through reading or like heard through them somewhere from someone or uh, the, the, the observation from my gurus, or uh, it, it can be any forums that I've gone through, and it's my personal view before getting into it, and nothing related to the organization which I work with. Uh, starting with my style, uh, it's before getting into this topic, uh, I found this uh, topic to be an insightful topic based on the uh, article which I've shared. Uh, this is a link which uh, has the same 20 product prioritization techniques in detail and in depth with examples. Uh, this article has triggered this interest to take this topic for the happy hours of coaching. So uh, you can have more insights on this link as a further read. And uh, in addition, I've also gone through this uh, books, which helped me in line with what is being discussed here. So Innovation Games is like uh, Luke's book, which has been very famous in terms of uh, having up the innovation games in place, which helped with more innovative ways to play around and understand what is uh, the, the prioritization technique that will be effective in terms of uh, when we are brainstorming with group. And again, uh, user story mapping is something which is helpful for story maps and other techniques. So Agile Estimation and Planning is one of the book which I been correlate with value and cost, value with risk and stuff. Uh, Lean Startup is again a very good book which talks about the startups, which helps us to uh, and take risk and then understand how well we can experiment at a short uh, span of time. Uh, with our MVP and professional product owner, any product owner who uh, wants to uh, have a profound knowledge on their product management art, in, especially in Scrum, uh, this book is like a Bible. So I would recommend this to be a, at least read once to understand the three V's of product management, which is vision, value, and validation. So this is something which I would suggest before I getting into the topic as a good read. And moving on to the topic, why prioritization? So prioritization is nothing but like we tend to have this uh, any anyways in, in terms, this is one of the major challenge or the top concern for most of the product managers today. What is that is demand in the market? Why is it something that I'm, I'm trying to at least get in uh, an insight in terms of uh, delivering a product that is needful for the customer? So when I'm thinking all this, do I really cater the demand in the market? or do my, do my product really has a brand value in the market. So uh, looking at this, uh, the prioritization as a top concern, what, what are all the things that would come in uh, when, when we are trying to prioritize a product backlog or a list of requirements for the product? Uh, understanding what is valuable to my customer and how it is adding value to my customer and whom it is adding value to. So this is something which is a primary question that arises in the mind of the product manager. And what would we do better 
uh, there anything that we can do better in the market for the existing products that is there, which we can build on top of it. And what should be released and the sequence of release that can, which is time to market. And the, and the way uh, which, which is complementary to it is like speed to market. So time to market and speed to market is something that we are trending to it uh, with the way how we can get it on the right time and in the right pace. So based on which we would, we would be looking at prioritization. Still able to see my screen? Yeah. So the periodic table of the product prioritization techniques is what we are going to look at today. It's the 20 uh, techniques which we are going to look at. So in this 20 techniques, uh, whatever that is there on the left, right? It's going to be quantitative and uh, moreover quantitative and internal to the organization. And we will have certain elements which is external to the organization, which are almost qualitative in nature. So whenever I say quantitative and qualitative, quantitative is nothing but a sample size. You have a number of people whom you have reached and with an, with an interview or their opinions or their uh, beat a suggestion from the product or their feedback on the product. And then you're trying to map it. it. This is going to be an absolute number, which is going to tell me what, what is that and what, what is that is the responses from the users. So qualitative is nothing but you get a response which substantiates that with a metric. So any number that substantiates that with a quant uh, qualitative approach, which gives you a quality of data to make a decision is what we call it as qualitative metric. So here, uh, whatever the techniques that is qualitative in nature, which, which will help you to decide something to move on. So there are certain things which is internal to the organization when we try to prioritize within the internal stakeholders. And there are certain things which is external to the organization where you will reach the end users or the, uh, the end external stakeholders to the organization. And then you will tend to have the uh, prioritization technique and keeping them involved in your process. So with this, uh, we will move on to Kano model. Uh, the first one, which we are going to discuss today. Kano model is widely used, uh, which, which has been a, a, a gift that has been given by a Japanese researcher and consultant, because this is something which is going to correlate the satisfaction and functionality. So where any functionality, how satisfied a user is, it can be in four ways. Either the, the functionality is like attractive to the user. And if, the, if, if it is like optimally that the performance is great, which, which satisfies the user, or it is a must be. When I say must be, it's something that's very basic for the user and without which the user will not be happy about it. Indifferent, it's like, it, it's like they, they don't, they are neutral. They are in neutral stance. They either want it or they might not. And that's not going to add any value, even if you give it or not, it's going to be a neutral stance. So whenever I say that, right, like when we are trying to have this kind of example, think of the make my trip survey that you receive in your inbox, red bus surveys in your inbox. Uh, what, what do they really do in that service? They will have like, uh, how do you travel? And your, they will ask about your travel pattern. They will ask your age, your name, and then your uh, travel pattern. And then they will tend to get those data. It is nothing but they are the train, tending to just map this to the Kano model, understanding that what is that the, fee, the, the feature or the service that they are providing, is it really required for the user or is it not required? So is it like functional or dysfunctional? They are trying to map it. And anything that you, you are giving in neither disagree or agree or strongly agree, that they will tend to map it with like it, expect it, don't care, live with, or dislike, which is generic to map that with five points. In. Which is, which is going to be this numerical scale of numbers. So you're going to just put it as a checkbox for one of the items in the five, zero or one, where they would take up the responses from Google Forms or any other medium. And then they will tend to get the data and then map it like this. And then they are going to just see how it is. So in, if you look at the, the don't care pattern, right? If you, it, if you look at it, it will be indifferent always. The diagonals will never be uh, the, the diagonals maybe would be questionable or debatable in terms, but when you look at the center of the table, it will always be uh, indifferent because you will neither disagree nor uh, agree with that. So the, the point here is like uh, you will have Q as questionable or as something which is reverse. So you will say you strongly disagree, but the functional is pre function is present, but you don't like that function at all. So you, you will say I, I strongly disagree. So either on this end it will be must be or either of this end it will be reverse so when i say this is nothing but the questionable 
and the reverse is alone uh, a, a different acronym here but rest of the all, the all the other alphabets is like the first alphabets from attractive performance must be an indifference so anything that is questionable or reverse is like totally against what we are going to do for example if i am saying dislike uh, you don't you you don't want you don't want that feature at all but the customer wants that and and that's the survey link i say must be there so this is something that that turns to be a, a eye opener for the product company to decide on so kano model is very important in terms of understanding how satisfied is your user check the pulse of that uh, user with the functionality that you are re uh, releasing in the market and then try to compare often saying like is it is it okay and is it like something that you want to use or continue or is it like optimal performance are we giving on uh, to you and or is it attractive or it doesn't even don't make any difference for you so that's the way how companies observe uh, the, the pattern uh, if you if you have been using up a credit card right they might be sending you often this a particular survey how happy are you and how what are all the other cards you use so just to understand how happy are you related with the product and its features so in the same way if you are using uh, your amazon prime account right if they are like giving you the survey right they would just uh, ask you a few questions within which they will understand your pulse all those responses is highly mapped with kano model and then that would be taken as the dysfunctional and functional area mapped with that and then they will be able to take up and then work on with this this is the most popular prioritization model next comes the qfd model whatever that we are discussing here right it's all again a quantitative approach which is external to the organization so it means that you are reaching out to certain people who are highly uh, going to respond to your questions based on the responses you are going to have a quantum of data with you where you can quantify that and then understand from the responses and you can just target your customers and again you can segment your customers in the way how it can be for different markets so that's the prime purpose for this particular model QFD is again a quality functional deployment. Again, uh, this is like invented by Yoji Akao. He's a Japanese planning specialist. This is primarily used in manufacturing industries, which focuses on product features, which is primarily viewed from different angles. Uh, it, it is like a roof and then a base and then a pillar. So we call that as house of quality. Uh, primarily, we have the correlations uh, again, when I say correlations, it's like the relation between the entire uh, segment and then like how you are getting a voice of the company. What are all the employees uh, voice that you're going to put in that will act into the how part and what part is going to be the voice of the customer. Whatever that you have received uh, as a need or a want from the customer, you are just going to put it there. And then the importance is going to be updated and the relationship between the, the customer and the company and then how it is going to be important and with the competitors, you're going to compare and list that towards. If you put in uh, Google of QFD for a manufacturing organization, especially you will get General Motors, Ford company who's giving uh, the QFDs for their activities and they primarily use this. And they will, they will have all requirements mapped to an uh, importance uh, by giving up a number from one to 100. And then uh, they will have the feature one, two, three, and then they would be tending to have some numbers for it and then give a raw score. Uh, when I say raw score, it's going to be the, the calculation together for each of the features. And then whichever is higher, they rank that and then prioritize. So for future feature one and two, if they want to go in and then customer requirements are high for feature five, that will get ranked first. So if you if you see feature three is highest ranking here based on the number of features and the importance, it goes first and then that's get, that gets implemented first based on the QFD. QFD is big uh, and vast topic, which which is separate and particularly for manufacturing organization, but yet uh, a very strong uh, value proposition canvas, which we can primarily use this in 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 relation to QFD because you will have the same thing in your value proposition canvas, understanding the gain, pain, job, and then customers, and then your uh, area where you can map that. Similar way, how we can have it in manufacturing sector. This is something which is primarily being used next to the Kano model. Uh, this is also a bit quantitative because you're going to get the numbers from the responses of the users, and then you're going to uh, have that in terms of external entities, not within the organization. 
though you are going to consider them as one of the entities. Third comes the opportunity scoring. Opportunity scoring is nothing but the, uh, the model which is derived from outcome-driven innovation framework, which is we call it as ODI framework, uh, named after a person called Anthony Wolwick, uh, which we call it as Tony's model, Tony Wolwick's model. Again, here we are going to relate importance plus the maximum way how Im important it is uh, along with the satisfaction. So which is going to give you the opportunity at last. So more of importance rather than satisfaction. And then like we are going to compare that and look at the opportunity that is there in the market. So if, it, if, the, if there is a extreme satisfaction at the end and then like it's primarily important, that has been like overserved product where we will be looking at that area and then we will be working on that particular requirements a lot. Uh, anything that is very minimal satisfaction and the importance is also minimum, we will tend to have uh, at least uh, the, the importance is more and then we are tending to have the satisfaction as a lower one. We will tend to at least appropriately serve the customers and the requirements, whomever we are targeting on. Underserved some, is something that we don't want uh, to, to look at right now because they are not going to be your opportunities forever. Uh, that is something we can pick at a later point in time. So this is something which uh, any, any organization tend to look at uh, finding a new business. So whenever uh, for, for an existing business and a new business, opportunity scoring is very important because you will understand how satisfied with the existing product. You can ask about the existing product satisfaction, how important that the features are, and then you can try to prioritize and getting the quantified data and then build a product. Opportunity scoring is very important in terms of finding a new opportunity, which can trigger a new business. Again, uh, this one is like buying a feature where we will be talking about innovation games, where Luke Hoffman is the one who have given this innovation games as a book. Uh, again, you have a mural template where you can play this game with uh, the stake stakeholders, uh, especially this is done during the product discovery phase or an inception phase where we would be talking about the product uh, and its features. And then on each stakeholders you can, uh, or the end users, you can give them some money and then uh, we can start asking them to buy a feature that they want uh, along with the reason for their purchase. So they will, they are going to tell you what is the price that they are going to pay and then what is the reason for their purchase as well. So they can uh, retain certain money and they don't need to uh, just spend everything that has been given to them, but they got to give a fair enough justification for the reason of their purchase and also the price that they want to give for each feature. With this, we will know which is being highly priced with the value that we are giving. So there is a famous quote that uh, Warren Buffett says, right? So you uh, pay you pay for, for a product, but then value is what you get from the product. So uh, you can, you can pr purchase it with a price, but the value is what you get from the product. And that is what is going to be in the minds of the customer. So uh, when I say this price and the purchase, uh, whichever is the high uh, priced item that has been given by for, for, for the feature that has been given by the stakeholders, that's the one that we are going to look at and tap. And that is something which is going to be the MVP for you because that's going to give you a, a USP in the market when you're going to deliver it. And uh, this is uh, something that can be played uh, as an individual internally to our organization as well. But quite a few, uh, when, when you look at the periodic table, it can be internal and external as well. But to align it more towards which uh, the applicability would be, uh, based on which we have just marked that as in a periodic table. And that's why we are we are quantifying that in an internal and external. But still, you can play this game internal to your organization to understand which is something that can be released early uh, and within your internal stakeholders as well. So uh, there is a mural template where you can exactly replicate this, or there is an Excel template which uh, is there uh, where you can put in and then get the formula and then uh, try to execute this game as, in, as a group uh, when they say this is the price and this is the reason for purchase. So this uh, buy a feature is a very specific one where you, uh, you pay for a feature. For example, uh, when, when, you, when you are uh, buying a suite of products from Microsoft, right? You don't need to buy a seed. You can buy only uh, one specific product for which you like. So it can be only Excel, it can be only Word, and you don't need to buy a seed. And that's where you, you pay only for a feature that is being loved most by the customer and which is demanding. 
so that's one uh, example where you can get this product at, at front and story mapping is another one which is by jeff patton uh, the story mapping is something which can help you uh, align your activities theme your activities and then once you theme your activities based on the necessity you can order them uh, and in your based on your time you can uh, just quantify and then say that this can be moved on to a later part of time and you can break the uh, the themes to a story and then a story to a, a particularly a task and then uh, that can be a granular level of task which helps you to at least understand the parent child relationship which helps you to understand a tree view of uh, a detail that that is required for an uh, whole some requirement in a product and again those uh, releases whatever that you are attending right you can uh, understand the necessity and the time based on which you can quantify and then ensure that the releases are being planned and this gives you a good roadmap for your stories that you are trying to build so uh, when i say story maps it's like uh, especially this is into software development so this this is also being applied in certain areas of uh, product management in uh, the core companies uh, just to ensure that there is a sticky notes and they have the themed uh, assignments and they're trying to replicate this which is being widely used and uh, moving on to masco model it's again dyke lug is the one who uh, developed masco model and especially it's mscw but to make it to a word he has add os to it and which which we he has just taken it up and uh, he has must have should have could have and won't have which is going to just tell you the difference and must have is like something you cannot negotiate with the customer it's the mvp for the product if if you want uh, if you are unable to deliver this your product was is, is going to be a big failure and uh, again it, this is something which is more viable for you uh, that there is a basic need for the customer should have is something that is important but not that critical or vital for you but maybe uh, it is painful to leave but uh, when you when you give that it's going to be a viable product for us and it turns to be a must have thing and uh, it, it is again you need to have some work around to understand whether to balance this kind of should haves in your requirements could have is again uh, it's it's desirable but it's not that important as should have it's next to it but it is like you need extra time and money that is required to develop this features and it is something that you can always rest around which is which is something we call it as intangibles maybe uh, you 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 have some extra time and money which you have uh, you can spend for that and you can deliver this won't have is something that uh, i would say it's something that you don't have uh, because of the budget or it's like you, it is not going to give any impact by delivering this feature we drop them and that's where we we mark them as won't have miro has a good template on moscow metrics which will be helpful for you to devise that and then get it done uh mural it's in the in the term of must have should have but not as masco but it's in a different way uh that that that's based on how we can get it but uh miro is something which will help you with masco metrics exactly as if it is from the eyes of dai club moving on to uh prune the product tree right uh till till this blue color and till this green right we are going to talk about uh the quantitative methods which is external to the organization so we are still talking about quantitative method which is external to the organization so for prune the product tree it is very effective one uh, in terms of uh, retrospective or it in terms of uh, a, a, a game where we can brainstorm together and understand the same way of masco or uh, the the other points of prioritization in a tree structure where we will look at trunk as a core or existing features that is already available in the product which you can enhance or upgrade uh, and your branches are nothing but your primary product or system functionality without which you cannot even uh, establish the product roots are nothing but a basic elements which is required to build the product and from it is it can be your technical requirements or the environments or the infrastructure that's required to run the product again it's like a new ideas anything that emerges is like leaves so this is the way where you can use that during your product discovery phase or the inception with your external stakeholders and understand what can be your leaves which is new ideas that is the primary focus of the product owner to get the new ideas from the stakeholders uh, roots and branches are something that you need to ensure that that is available or in place and uh, your trunks are the core or existing features which is already there 
your trunk needs to be stronger so that your your core business is still alive and you are you are running you are able to run in the market without any uh, flaws in your product again miro has a very good prune the product tree template which you can use and i have given the link there moving on to speedboat the last quantitative uh, external technique which is again uh, from the innovation game uh, you usually use the speedboat technique or the, uh, for for the product uh, brainstorming uh, sailboat is something that we would be using it for your uh, retrospective so uh, speedboat is nothing but to understand what are all the anchors that is something which is imp the impediments what is something that is helpful for you to innovate and what is something that's going to uh, bring in the way how it can be so this is the way how we are going to just talk about and then make sure that the external stakeholders go and fix the sticky in in place and then get the product uh, discovery being done with with their own ideas what they feel as anchors what they feel as something which is a wind blower what they feel as a a boat or what they feel is as an uh, outcome or what is that they are feeling that to be a place where we are struck up so all this is something that we are going to discuss in uh, for speedboat as in when the speed is uh, speed of the boat is faster we can reach uh, your your speed to market in in, in a while uh, because your competitors are more uh, like demanding uh, and then the, the competition is very high in the market if you are not marketing it on time it's it's going to be someone who can win it uh, a good story for uh, the speedboat is like uh, you have free charge which was there and now there there are uh, options like mobi quick and others right so how how is like free charge and mobi quick are different so both are like recharge platforms both are something where you can pay all your bills and stuff but when you see there is a app called cred or you have icici pay from your banking all this is just to pay the credit card bills but this business was first early adopted by cred so where you can pay all your credit card bills in one one place this, this was just a dream plek technologies startup now it is being an ipl sponsor yeah and moving on to the next uh, element like this is going to be a, a mid where it's going to be purely an internal one uh, when you look at this periodic table right this is going to be completely internal and but quantitative so what why is it being quantitative in terms it's pure math so your net present value or your internal rate of return or your discounted payback period has a, a meaning behind it uh, and it is like you are going how it is going to be in terms of your monetary value so your net present value is something that you can calculate with the current value of uh, the future payment of systems like what is the whatever that you have the subscribers who are already there and you will have that particular stream of payments which is going to come to you and internal rate of return it's going to be that on the rate of the percentage that is there which is projected on a time that percentage would be coming up to you on a, a certain term of periods so you will get it back and then that's a rate of return which you would calculate and discounted payback period is again like you will have take it into uh, the factors uh, and uh, into account and then you will have that when you get back the investment whatever that you have put in so this discounted payback period is something that is like after your break even so any new revenue is something that is generated uh, as and when you have deployed the product so you have released a product to the market anything that is there getting up a new subscriber that's where you get your new revenue incremental revenue is like providing an upgrade or a service that is a value addition to the customer for example if you are you are having up a hotstar vip user but you are getting up a premium which is an additional subscription so you are going to pay for it and in the same way there are a lot of other subscriptions where you can get in done so if you are if you are not into a ott platform if you are tending to have a additional value an incremental revenue for your product uh, try for the car purchase right whatever the accessories that you purchase there is an additional or an amc that they tend to uh, pitch right all that products of amcs are into incremental revenue you would either do that as a uh, completely or you are you are going to utilize that amc or not they are going to get the incremental revenue there and for every year which is like an additional service or an upgrade that they are trying to give and retained revenue is nothing but the customer churn so i am just giving you an option of 200 rupees discount to retain you when you are saying i am going to disconnect the service you don't like my product you are saying i'm going to exit and i'm going to i'm going to just leave your product but this is something that i'm tending to just retain you and then give this value 
So anyhow, my uh, my, there will be a hit uh, in my uh, value or the net present value, but I'll be able to retain a revenue, which which will be uh, a break even at a longer point in time. And cost savings is again like operational efficiency that I'm going to just do it uh, within, which is inter internal to the company, and then I'm trying to save some money. So this is financial analysis, purely uh, a, a, a pure play thought of financial uh, auditors or the CFOs who will tend to sit with the product owners and understand what will be the monetary benefits and then try to prioritize. So this is purely into a math where they will calculate what is the return on investment of what we are trying to invest. And then based on which they will be able to jot out a budget or a plan and then tend to give whatever the features that they want to prioritize and then try to deploy each of the product. Again, uh, Ian McLester framework is something that is not a, a, a typical framework, but this is, uh, which is very popular in Quora. Uh, and uh, he has been a CP, uh, he's being a CPO in a company right now, which is a very, uh, like I would say, uh, it's 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 a fangy company like i would say it's, it's one of the facebook he's been with facebook amazon netflix or whatever the companies that we call it as fan companies but uh he is into uh the, he's he has the one uh into quora uh where his posts are very famous in quora and this framework was published there and that's where it occupied the pretty periodic table here so uh, he has given uh, the important themes for the products or business. So this is the way how he has devised this framework. First, define your themes of the product or business. And then uh, while deciding the theme, keep, your, uh, keep in your mind that you're looking at customer acquisition, engagement, or activating the new customer by bringing in the new customer or average revenue per user and uh, select any top three out of this. And then try to define the themes. And then prioritize your resources and teams. In there. And it is like you have your team members, you have marketing and everything. Uh, have the relative priority with each other and then generate your ideas. When you, when you generate ideas, have your team come up with new ones and then try to have Pareto principle in mind. 20% of the pro project that you have will get from 80% of the outcome, whatever that you're going to get in. So in the same way, estimate each impact of the team and then try to at least uh, have a broad spectrum of magnitude and then like trying to have your impact map to it, which we call it as impact mapping. Again, uh, estimate each project cost and then uh, try to have it because this is again a qualitative one, which we'll always talk about with numbers, right? So uh, have uh, this bit with the relevant stakeholders help uh, come up with an estimation for each of the project cost with the themes that you are trying to correlate and then try to prioritize with each theme and then have the impact to cost ratio, which is going to tell you how is the impact for each of the cost elements that you are trying to map. Within which you will get the topmost item where the impact will be uh, less, but the cost, uh, sorry, impact will be more, but the cost will be less in terms where the financial uh, auditor or the CFO or anyone in the finance team will be happy to invest money because that will be a low cost, but a high impact product. Moving on to value versus risk. And this is something which is uh, the inspiration from Mike Kahn in his book, uh, Agile Estimation and Planning, where uh, we, this has not been a, 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 a placeholder in the periodic table, but it's an inspiration from the uh, book uh, where we have picked on and it's an Agile Estimation and Planning where he has a chapter dedicated to it for val where we have mapped values with this risk, which he has coined three uh, specific risks, which, which we can map it. So scheduled risk is something that you cannot miss because like you need, you cannot, uh, you need time so that without which you cannot, uh, you, you cannot miss that. And cost risk is something that you might have to uh, run the business case, but you need, cost, you need money that incurs a lot and that because of money, this might get failure. And functional uh, risk is something that you might not be able to do this at all. That that's uh, something that you feel that it's, the functionality which is not feasible for you to build. So in the way uh, you map it in the graph, right? Anything that is uh, high in uh, high risk and high value, do it first. Anything that is high in uh, value, but low risk, do it second. Anything that is low risk, low value, do it at last. Anything at high risk, but uh, low, low risk and high value, uh, like again, in the, in the YC versa, same, do it last or do do it uh, do avoid it 
that's the way how is your left quadrant is always looking at right so this quadrant mapping of like values as risk is from uh, mike con's book you have a dedicated chapter where you can read about this next comes the business goal uh, if you have been uh, very familiar with the a a r r r funnel which we call it as r funnel uh, where you will be talking about this is primarily invented by dave mcclure uh, where he has just got this as a matrix for startups but uh, if you look at the a a r model it's an acronym where a stands for acquisition where you uh, your customers are coming from where you are acquiring your customers maybe from a potential competitor or uh, newly uh, getting uh, in customer for your product and activation how good is your customer's first experience so when i say activation he would sign off or uh, he would tend to at least sign up for a feature he will be happy to at least sign a contract for you saying yeah i'm i'm liking this feature let me activate this product or the feature from you and then he will pay for that retention is again how many customers are you retaining uh, like like avoiding the customer churns and referral again uh, are how are you getting your referral to your networks uh, just like uh, google pay which has started with the referral bonus uh, again uh, if you if you look at any of the the ones which is very popular is like zepto or swiggy or whatever when you try to refer you get a referral bonus any any companies who are typically a product management company tending to at least like big, give a big impact this a a a r uh, like r funnel we call it as a r r funnel which is r funnel uh, which is imbibed in their mindset because they want to bring uh, each of this uh, placeholders a, a, a potential impact in the market revenue again how you can monetize any of the behavior that you come into and uh, in in business goal we tend to have this r funnel map to it and then like we say which business goal are we trying to improve at this moment activation or whatever is this any of this funnel which you want to primarily focus on and which features are expected to have make a biggest impact of the goal that you have so based on this r funnel you will be able to r we, we call it as r matrix because everything is a number where you will get how many number of uh, acquisitions that you have granted how many number of activated user that you have and how many uh, uh, churns that you have avoided so how much is your revenue all this matrix for startups is the numbers that you can tend to put in your business goal and tend to build a product where, where you can prioritize any of the product feature based on this moving on to value versus cost again this is also an inspiration from uh my con but uh value versus risk and value versus cost is nothing but where, where you can enter low cost and then get high value so uh value it, it can also be called as value versus effort or value versus complexity where you will tend to maximize your value delivery over a period of time so anything that is high uh and high value uh but low cost do it now and again uh, anything that is of high uh, value and then like tend to have a low cost or a high value and avoid and balance it anything at high value and high cost tend to have it next maybe you can wait for some time and then tend to do it next so this is the way how we tend to map it and then try to hold certain priority uh, items and then have the product features moving on further scorecard is the next one which you will be talking about feature 1 2 3 4 and whatever but you will map each criteria for the product with the stakeholders you will have all the criteria for each of the product and then like at its feature and have weightage for that criteria so if, if there are 10 stakeholders they will all be giving the criterion weightage and then you will have each feature marked in and then average out to a score based on uh, totaling that number uh, whichever has stands to be a higher number there you will be uh, tending to have that ranked as the first one and tend to deliver that this scorecard pattern is like very typical in terms of your appraisal even because this is going to balance your criteria and then have weightage to it. this is the closest example so your appraisal pattern is like based on the criteria which is your performance uh, management criteria and then you have weightage to each of the item and then each of the item will be have with certain uh, marking which you will give on a scale of 1 to 5 here it can be scale of 1 to 100 and that's where we have parked it so on a one on a scale of 1 to 100 if you give that and then have a common average or all the criterion and then tend to make it up then this will be the scoring and where you can rank it and then deliver it based on the ranking and this is where it's very easy prioritization technique because 
people tend to follow this scorecard because scorecard gives you a, a way but this can fool around with numbers uh, because it can be political with stakeholders who can uh, have a group of uh, stakeholders can bogus the number and then they can fake around it so that's why this is uh, into the amber color when i say this goes with the one either not quantitative nor qualitative or in our internal nor external so it, it lies in the middle because this is not this can be either way but it can be bogus they they cannot they can be just like a mere group where they can tend to give this number same way for theme screening in theme screening we have uh, the, the criterion one criterion two and criterion three the same pattern but the point here is the plus minus zero is something which is being used rather than using the scale of one to hundred the plus stands for something that is an added advantage minus stands for added disadvantage of using the product and the zero stands to be a neutral stance saying i am okay with this i either i don't agree or disagree so this is in the way where you take up this plus minus and then take up a score for it and then bring up a rank based on which we will be del delivering the product this is again in line with scorecard but the the the, pri the primary way is like your sequencing of numbering is not with a series of 1 to 100 it's going to be plus minus and zero uh moving on here again uh, to the qualitative ones but purely internal to the organization classification ranking it this you can try to use within your team uh, for your development or your release or deployment or even if you try to have an internal customer or if you are working within an in-house or a captive uh, unit you can tend to use this because this is going to be based on expert judgment so you are you are going to have a set of experts in the stakeholder or a subject matter experts in within the stakeholders where they will be telling you which is uh, the one that is so more important so when i have this moscow and classification ranking is more or less similar so if you look at moscow it is more of the the one that is done in external one and uh, it, which is qualitative and then this is qualitatively internal but this classification ranking is purely based on an expert opinion or an expert judgment so mostly this cla classification ranking and moscow stands to be similar ones which is for the different set of stakeholders this is for external and this is for internal systemico is again a, a way how uh, we have uh, a place where we can use the uh, model which is from barry o'reilly uh, when when you have this barry o'reilly counseling like they have uh, created this particularly to have the value dimension of user with each of the goals that they have similar to your business goals your user has goal one, two, three in their mind, and how you are going to have that uh, engagement level of the user mapped to your priority of, uh, of the user goals. So your core uh, ones are the one that is very basic need of the customer. Again, you can try to map this with uh, with Moscow. Uh, use you can have new and improved features, which is the enhancements. Engage is nothing but you can uh, come back in the future, which which is going to be a repeat business for us. Explore is nothing but you're going beyond it. It's like a customer delighter, trying to be an intangible ones, but that can be a delighter for the customer. So system, Systemico is widely used in Barry O'Reilly and which is like, they have had a no products organization. Like they have something which is have created, which, uh, which they are trying to use. And you will find a blog when you Google it in Systemico, you will find only organization is like Barry O'Reilly where they have written an article detailed about it, which they have used it widely inside their organization. Again, stack ranking is nothing but your uh, your internal ones, which is again a qual qualitative one. But uh, the point here is like you will have only one, which is again a stack, which is putting on in the, the last one comes out first. So only one thing gets to be the priority at one. It's a sequential one. Like it's not going to be one uh, like multiple backlog. It's going to be one sequential uh, pattern of arrangement where you will tend, tend to take up only one at a time. So anything that is internal uh, within an organization, we internally focus based on this and it's, it's purely opinion based ranking and uh, opinions may change and uh, within the stakeholders, there might be difference in opinion. So stack ranking is not that uh, great in terms of moving on because it might trigger to a leading discussion that can lead to conflicts. But 
uh, the 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 way how it is uh, you can confront and bring consensus based on your opinion and then try to build this the stack ranking pattern builds the collaboration uh, on the other hand when it is uh, facilitated very well within the product owners and you are tending to have a, a opinion which can uh, turn to be a better place uh, of, of, of discussion and then they can all agree uh, based on the consensus and then try to uh, fix up the priority again uh, feature buckets is a, th a technique by adam nash uh, this is something which is again going to talk about rr funnel uh, this is like rr framework or rr funnel which is going to be the same thing right now i have given you the user action as well how many number of user visits the app uh, which which is like the hit number of hits staying one minute plus within your application or like uh, watching an ad or youtube ad has been wh whatever that is there that is something which we call it as acquisition because anything that is more than one plus minute which makes you uh, retained in the app without moving on further and wait and watch the content is something that we are tempting to find the user action. Anything that we subscribe to the newsletter or signups for free trial, all this comes under acquisition and activation. So uh, again, retention is also, again, you open email, clicks through, uh, how many clicks that you have done? Uh, like, like you have a sign up button, the offer ends today, triple nine or double nine or only one rupee sale, uh, all your uh, Reliance Geo Mart sale, for the day, all that have a button that makes you to click, right? All that is in retention. So again, a referral is like how many you, you refer three people and then you get something of, uh, of, of a yearly package free. So all that is, is going to cater here. So that is going to be the metric movers in the feature bucket. So those are all the ones that is going to talk about metric movers. Customer request is external request from customer. So any feedback or suggestion that has been given by the customer, that's taken into priority and that's also been worked up. Customer delighters are the last one, which would be something that you might tend to work on when it is needed or not. So feature buckets is something which is uh, extensively used uh, in most of the app development companies because that will give you the R framework very clearly and mapping the, the metric movers, customer requests, and also the customer delighters. So that's something which we which we can see in all your app development companies, uh, your big basket, growers, anybody. You you can tend to apply that because that their primary work on uh, is, is based on the ARR framework. Again, uh, moving on to the next one is KJ model. We call it as zero Kawakita, but it's called as Kawakita zero model KJ model. It's a Japanese technique devised based on the inventor. And it's like uh, you you title them, there are certain requirements, you group them and then cluster them together and then title them and then have that uh, brought in together. And then that is where we prioritize and then move it in batches. Saying this title or this list of features will go in and deploy it together. And uh, mostly targeted uh, as a stakeholders within the same organization. You cannot do this with external entities because this is purely internal uh, where this might be a failure if you are trending to move it and then club it together with the external entities because for maybe for you the priority ones would be with different titles for them it's going to be different and their conflict arises there which will not be something that we might work on and uh, this objective group consensus is it's again uh, very very clear out of a collection of subjective opinionated data is what is the outcome that you will expect from kj method so when you read it again, objective growth group consensus, which you're going to work on and brainstorm with a set of people out of a collection of subjective op opinionated data is what is the outcome of KJ method. So if you are trying to get this done for uh, uh, an external organization, this will not work because your opinionated data will be highly uh, complex there, which will not work out. Any questions and answers and I'm done with 20 techniques. So. This 20 techniques, we have uh, a, a, a mural or Miro template. I'll also share this template in PDF form where you can tend to use this. And the, the blog, which I have given in the reference for good read, right? That's really an extensive place where you get all the references and all this 20 techniques have been very clearly narrated with examples and in a very vast and detailed way and which will trigger you to go and read more books. And that will also make you to read and get enormous knowledge in terms of product prioritization that can even lead uh, a passion towards product ownership as well. So with this, I, I am I'm open to question and I'm done.
Uh, thanks, thanks, Ram, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Yeah, we will open up the floor for uh, Q and A. Uh, but before that, uh, just a couple of announcements. So I have shared the YouTube uh, video link uh, to all of you. Uh, you can go and uh, you know, watch um, the YouTube video. I mean, we have a channel where we have hundred plus videos. Even this video is getting feeded there. Uh, so do go ahead and uh, subscribe um, uh, to the channel because I'm sure it will help you in your journey. And yeah, I think uh, we can now open up the floor for questions. Yeah, one more announcement. Sorry, yeah, I forgot that. So there's this uh, Unicom conference happening on 7th of July. And um, yeah, this is an online conference. Um, and uh, we are very happy to inform that uh, Pune Jail Thought Leaders is a partner for that. And what we are giving you as a complimentary thing is we are giving you free tickets for this conference since you have attended this uh, session. So feel free to connect on this conference. I have shared the link with all of you here in the chat and uh, the free ticket is yours. This is worth 5,000 rupees ticket, which I'm giving you free because we are a partner for that event. And since all of you have taken efforts to be here, so I'm handing over this uh, free ticket coupon to all of you. So if you are interested, do join this uh, conference, which is an online conference, Unicom conference. And yeah, so with that, uh, I will open up the floor for questions. So if anyone has any question, just some protocols, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, please come on camera so that we can see you. And yeah, I mean, anyone would like to ask any question uh, to Ramnathan, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. I will unmute the person. Any, any questions? <clears throat> or you can also type in the questions. Uh, those of you who are on LinkedIn Live, or you can also type in your questions. Uh, but here um, in the in the Zoom meeting, anyone any questions? Okay, let me check uh, if there are any questions in the chat. Okay, I think uh, there's one question on the LinkedIn. Actually, the question is I'm not able to read it. Uh, just give me a minute. I'm just reading it. There's one question I think which has come up there. I'm just trying to figure it out. But yeah, meanwhile here, anyone, any questions here? And yeah, you can uh, you can unmute yourself, by the way. Now you can, uh, all the participants can unmute. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, so I've unmuted all of you. Yeah, you can just unmute yourself now. Can you all hear me? Yeah, Ram, you can unmute yourself now and speak. I think it got accidentally uh, muted. Done. Yeah, yeah, now I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, anyone, any questions? Who will decide which method? Yeah, I think this was the same question Excellent. on LinkedIn Live also. Excellent. Yeah, so there's a question from Narayana. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Narayana. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to speak? see the chat. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Narayana, uh, Narayana, it's like uh, you, you, it is like the product owner who decides it, the product owner for the product. If you are using Scrum or any other framework for which within uh, it's been developed through agile software development or for, particularly for software development. If not, if it is for the core company or if it is outside the software arena, it's the product manager who decides that. But it can be a combination of one or two as well, because when you look at Moscow or the other prioritization techniques, you might have seen everything has a light principle on must have, should have or could have. And it, it is in a different name. But uh, usually, based on the uh, the mix of stakeholders, the product manager decides who are to be uh, taken up for the discussion. The brainstorming happens inclusive of all the stakeholders. If it is uh, some uh, users or stakeholders have to be restricted, the product owners or the product manager takes the call. Okay, and I think there's a similar question on LinkedIn, uh, Ram, that, uh, yeah. I mean, is there any um, way to decide which technique to use in which scenario? Uh, kind of... mm -hmm. uh, when whenever you have the theme based ones right uh, when whenever you are acting on the list of uh, the vast users or the, the target segment is very vast then you go with the quantitative approach because your responses mm -hmm. can be quantified with the number of responses and then uh, based on which you can uh, have the funnel to at least segregate the, the responses and then theme them together okay. so if if you if you feel the the uh, there are more number of competitors. You are into something which is very uh, essential uh, pattern that you want to prioritize. Then go with qualitative approach because that will tend to have more quality towards the outcome that you are going to generate. So it 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 is again uh, based on internal or external. We got to decide uh, being mindful on which one to choose 
uh, understanding the nature of the the, uh, the requirements and then go with the prioritization technique. Okay, got it. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, anyone else, uh, any question? I mean, please feel free to unmute yourself. How to prioritize enablers? I think this is more like um, a scaled agile framework question. Yeah. That's another question. Yeah, you, <laughs> your enablers are like, that's why we, we have a certain agile specific or like uh, scaling specific frameworks like innovation game side right? that goes hand in hand with safe. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, the prune the product tree, which talks about your enablers prioritization. So they have their base, uh, the root or wherever we have the environment related, the infrastructure related, all, all the other trunks we, which we cover based on without which eliminating that. I mean, in core companies, we would use QFT, which is a similar equivalent for manufacturing. You also take the enablers there, which is a different name for manufacturing sector. So mm -hmm. uh, especially for IT, I would say the innovation games are in alignment with SAFE or the other frameworks, which goes hand in hand, the ready-made solution which you have. Okay. Okay, ARR follows uh, Scrum Guide. Okay, ARR is something that is, uh, even the Scrum teams tend to follow ARR because uh, our funnel is, uh, uh, it's a base for your pricing strategy. It is used for your product pricing strategy and understanding your market, go to market strategies, which we call it as GTM strategies. When you go and Google it as GTM strategies, we call it as GTM or global uh, uh, time to market or go to market strategies. This is something which is going to tell you how you are going to activate or acquire or retain or you are going to revenueize or referral uh, through which channels you are going to hold your customer or acquire your customer or uh, like avoid the churns within the customer base. So this is something that's not, I would not say this is uh, like aligned towards Scrum Guide or you know, we cannot refrain only with Scrum with for this. This is a wider base for all, it, which is which is very generic and vast topic in product management. So Scrum is one subset out of this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, those are pretty much the questions. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can always connect with Ram on LinkedIn. He's available on the platform. Uh, by the way, just to let you know, Ram is also presenting in the regional Scrum Gathering Hyderabad, which is happening on 8th and um, 9th of July next week. So in case anyone of you has bought the tickets for that, uh, you can again hear out uh, to Ram his topic. And um, yeah, I mean, that will be an, another opportunity for you to go ahead and uh, connect with uh, Ram there, right? And yeah, you can always connect with Ram on LinkedIn. Um, I will also see Ram if there are more questions on LinkedIn. I will uh, uh, let post you, but of course, people would connect you on LinkedIn. It will be easier for them uh, to connect. Yeah. We'll share the presentation uh, and also we'll try to answer whatever the LinkedIn questions are. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. And I know, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the reason why I'm rushing into the things is because Ram is not feeling well. So he told me that, but still I appreciate his zeal and energy. So Ram, we never felt that you're not well. Okay. The <laughs> same passion was there. The same enthusiasm was there, the way you were explaining. And to be very honest, even I learned some of the new techniques today. Okay. Thank God I didn't it's not speak. That I <laughs> <laughs> no no that's okay we would have accepted that right i mean we understand i mean we are in a uh, i mean uh, we, from a health wise we know right what kind of challenges uh, we are facing right i mean all of us have gone through it i mean the last few couple of years have been really troublesome uh someone or the other in our family or we itself have gone through that but really appreciate um, your zeal and passion and as i said right i mean I never felt that um, you are not uh, feeling well. Okay. So thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, and that's the reason why I'm rushing into the things. Okay. Otherwise I would have definitely continued with this. Uh, maybe I'll just need a, a screen share for a minute. If that's okay, Ram, can I share the screen? Yeah. I'm just stopping the sharing and like, ah, let's. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, so once again, thanks, thanks uh, to Ram uh, yeah, uh, for, for sharing this. And just as a small token of appreciation, uh, this is what we would like to hand over to you for the investment you have done in, um, uh, for our community, for uh, making sure that our community is learning um, uh, on a continuous learning mode. So once again, thanks, thanks a lot uh, for joining this session, sharing your viewpoints. And as I said, right, I mean, yes, there are so many prioritization techniques, but there's always to learn something, right? So thanks. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, take rest, I would say, and get well soon, right? That yeah, is what I would say. And, <laughs> yeah. And really appreciate your zeal and energy. So, and for the team here, for the audience here, uh, look for, look, look forward for more speakers, more topics, more diverse topics as we uh, move along. Right. So thanks. Thanks everyone. And have a happy weekend to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks all. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.